All right, this is for you, Chris, because apparently you don't think that cash is a viable option for consuming healthcare services. So I used Excel and just did a little bit of uh, playing with numbers. Uh, we've got a standard um, HDHP, our annual premiums around uh, 6,600 a year. Um, so over the course of 30 years, we'll have paid $267,000 in premiums, um, assuming you know a slight increase every year in premiums, obviously, because our, our age and health risks are gonna go up every year. So let's take a look at what would happen if an insurance company offered a product that was uh, didn't include cancer. And then we went out and we just got a special cancer rider that had a separate deductible, separate uh, per person max, that sort of thing. Um, considering I have a pretty low risk for uh, cancer, we'd be looking at reducing our premiums for uh, our regular HDHP quite a bit without by taking that off. And we'd get a higher deductible, separate deductible, add in a premium for a cancer rider, and that cancer rider, of course, is going to go up over a year, over time, and we'd probably actually save money by splitting the two out. Of course, we'd have a higher uh, exposure to our deductibles because we'd have split deductibles, um, probably a higher deductible on the cancer rider. But going further with that, getting more creative, um, what if we took the difference and started investing the difference in the premiums year after year, and as our invested difference starts to grow, what we're going to do is we're going to start reducing, or excuse me, we're going to graduate the deductible on the cancer rider. So by like year 10, I'm going to go ahead and bump that deductible up to like $30,000 because I've got 22 grand in cash saved. And so my, my premiums are going to go down over time. Eventually, I could probably even um, drop it to like a $50,000 deductible, $100,000 deductible. Those premiums are going to get minuscule on that cancer rider because I've been investing the difference and I've got the cash to cover it on the back end. Now, that's a microeconomic argument. On the, on the macro scale, though, the problem that's happening is that when people have insurance that covers everything unequivocally without them having to put any kind of consumer knowledge or consumer decision making into the medical or healthcare consuming process, then demand for healthcare products is unnaturally shifted up. Rather than having an equilibrium price, the equilibrium price becomes an absolutely moot point because um, your, your consumers of healthcare don't care what the price is. They've already paid their premium, so they're going to consume healthcare at an abnormally high rate, which pushes the demand higher. But supply is going isn't able to keep up with it. This is why we have shortages of drugs. This is why we have issues with rising healthcare costs, is because the demand is unnaturally high, and supply or the equilibrium price is going to shift accordingly. So when you talk about high healthcare costs, shortages of drugs, it's because people can consume the medical uh, or the healthcare services and the healthcare products without really having to worry about the cost, which creates an unnaturally high demand, uh, impacts the uh, supply-demand curve. So I thought that was a fun little exercise in economics to deal with. Um, I can email you this spreadsheet if you really want to play with it, um, but I do believe that cash is a viable option for consuming even expensive treatments like cancer.